On most vacations, you pick a place to go, you eat the same food over and over, and you lie on the same beach. But with Celebrity Cruises, you can explore a new destination every day. Across Europe, the Caribbean, or Alaska, you'll experience an absolutely incredible ship with delicious restaurants, nonstop entertainment, and the best rooms at sea. And now with Celebrity's Black Friday event, you can have it all. To book, go to Celebrity.com, call 1-800-CELEBRITY, or contact your travel advisor. Offer applies to select sailing, savings amount varies by destination. Other terms apply. Visit Celebrity.com for details. Ships Registry, Malta, and Ecuador. Looking to switch your phone service? Check out Boost Infinite Wireless. Its new technology switches between its own network and the other top two networks to find the best quality calls and data for you anywhere, anytime. And you can get a low-priced, unlimited wireless plan that gives you a new iPhone every year. So switch today. Call 855-55-BOOST. That's 1-855-55-BOOST. Visit BoostInfinite.com. That's BoostInfinite.com. Or go to Amazon.com and search for Boost iPhone 15. See BoostInfinite.com for terms and conditions. Hello, from Wonder Media Network, I'm Jenny Kaplan, and this is Womanica. This month, we're pulling back the curtain to reveal women overlooked in their own lifetimes or in our historical accounts of the eras in which they live. We're talking about the activists, thinkers, leaders, artists, and innovators history has forgotten. Today, we're talking about a Victorian era writer and social theorist who didn't hide from or obscure her disability. At a time when women were written off as hysterical and sick people as incapable of caring for themselves, she wrote and advocated her way toward respect and awareness for people with long-term illnesses like herself. Please meet Harriet Martineau. Harriet was born in 1802 in Norwich, England. Her parents were progressive Unitarians who gave their sons and daughters equal education. Though once schooling was over, they expected their sons to find jobs and their daughters to stay at home. Harriet didn't like this arrangement. So much so, she wrote and published an article called On Female Education in a Unitarian Journal, The Monthly Repository. When her brother Thomas learned she wrote it, he praised the article and told Harriet, Now, dear, leave it to other women to make shirts and darn stockings, and you devote yourself to this. So she did. Harriet continued to write articles for the Monthly Repository and other journals. She became engaged to her brother's friend, John Hugh Worthington, but their marriage never came to be. John fell ill and died. Harriet was overcome with grief and also a sense of relief. In the Victorian era, marriage could limit a woman and force her into a life as a homemaker. In 1826, Harriet's father died. The Marchno family fortunes had also taken a turn. War and financial crises left them in substantial debt. Her father's passing meant Harriet needed to find a new source of income. She had been deaf since the age of 12, which limited her job prospects. One thing she had proven she could do was write. So writing became not just a hobby, but a profession. Harriet started writing about religion and women's education before shifting her focus to political economy in 1832. That year, she published the first volume of Illustrations of Political Economy, a collection of short stories in conversation with the philosophies of intellectuals, such as Thomas Malthus and Adam Smith. She wrote many more volumes in the series over the next two years, each one wildly successful. Harriet quickly became one of Britain's most popular intellectuals. She would go on to write more than 30 books and countless articles and essays in her lifetime. In 1839, Harriet was traveling with friends in Venice when she was suddenly struck with the inability to stand or walk. An ache throbbed from her back all the way down to the heels of her feet. Back in England, Harriet was diagnosed with a retroverted uterus and a uterine tumor. There was no known cure at the time. Harriet moved to Tynemouth in northeastern England and spent much of the next several years in bed, often unable to move from pain. But she could still write and continue to do so in earnest. Harriet filled her new room in Tynemouth with books and paintings and a telescope to see the stars at night. She was strict about who could visit her and who could not. Usually, sick people were not allowed this right, especially during the Victorian era. People with long-term illnesses were diminished and belittled, seen as unable to take care of themselves. 
Harriet rejected these stereotypes and was a staunch advocate for herself. In 1844, Harriet outlined many of her feelings about long-term illness in an anonymously published collection of essays entitled Life in the Sick Room. Invalid writing was a popular genre of the time. Usually, it took the form of prayer books or hymnals to provide a sense of relief and hope for the sick and their loved ones. Harriet's essays defied the norms of the genre. Instead, she wrote about the benefits of being away from one's family and about how draining it can be for an ill person to put on a brave face and manage their caretaker's emotions. Speaking out about the emotional labor required of sick people was radical for the time period. Members of the medical community disliked Harriet's essays. One doctor wrote a rebuttal, claiming Harriet was delusional or hysterical. Soon after publishing Life in the Sick Room, Harriet found what she thought was a cure for her ailment. Harriet underwent mesmerism, a treatment developed in the 1700s that supposedly alleviated symptoms by readjusting an invisible internal fluid. Today, it's seen as a form of hypnotism. Whether or not it actually changed anything in Harriet's body, the pain she dealt with daily was greatly alleviated after the treatment. However, after her death, an autopsy found that the cyst had in fact continued to grow throughout her life. It measured 30 inches by 28 inches in circumference. Most cysts average around 3 to 5 inches. After 10 years of relatively good health, Harriet once again began to feel unwell in 1855. Convinced her life was nearing its end, she produced a two-volume autobiography. Harriet lived for another 21 years. The autobiography remained unedited on her bookshelf. She continued to write articles for the Daily News, for whom she'd been employed since 1852. Harriet passed away in 1876. She was 74 years old. Her good friend eventually published Harriet's life story. It's considered one of the best autobiographies by a woman in the 19th century. All month, we're talking about women behind the curtain. For more information, find us on Facebook and Instagram at Womanica Podcast. Special thanks to Liz Kaplan, my favorite sister and co-creator. Talk to you tomorrow. Congratulations to the city of Bellevue, Washington, first place award winner for innovation in community at the 2023 Unconventional Awards presented by T-Mobile for Business. The city of Bellevue has revolutionized public safety as a leader in technological innovation to decrease road-related fatalities and injuries. In collaboration with T-Mobile 5G Solutions, Bellevue has improved the Vision Zero program, increasing real-time communications between cars, pedestrians, cyclists, and traffic infrastructure to provide early warnings on dangerous road interactions. T-Mobile for Business congratulates the city of Bellevue for their innovation and unconventional thinking. No one likes to talk about money. Am I saving enough? Can I buy a house? Am I paying too much in taxes? Will I be able to retire? What if you could unlock insights about your finances in less than five minutes with a clear picture of where you stand today and where your money can work harder? Now you can. Visit facet.com to take the free quiz and get your financial wellness score today. That's F-A-C-E-T.com. This ad is sponsored by Facet. Facet Wealth Incorporated is an SEC registered investment advisor. This is not an offer to buy or sell securities, nor is it investment, legal, or tax advice. Have you had it with toxic pet odor products that don't really work? Try the revolutionary new odor eliminator, Poof. Poof eliminates odors instantly. No harsh chemicals, no tacky perfumes. Poof dismantles odors on a molecular level, turning any organic odor into clean, fresh air instantly. And not just pee or poop stink. Use it on stinky pet toys, their beds, even on stinky skin folds, ears, and around eyes. Because it doesn't contain harsh chemicals. Get the amazing new pet odor eliminator everybody's talking about. Go to poof.com today. That's P-O-O-P-H dot com. If it's not poof, it stinks.